yeah. uh, we are just starting. Uh, we are a very small body bank, and uh, uh, we're initiating studies on cancer, uh, so collecting uh, samples from uh, cancer patients. Um, so one of the things that uh, prompted us to start the biobank was because looking at the, um, the health disparities across SEM countries, we saw that um, uh, the, the types of cancer, or proportion of cancer in, um, across the different SEM is, is not exactly the same. You know, there are some similarities, but they're not exactly the same. But uh, what, what um, I'm sorry, okay. so what, um, uh, uh, what, uh, what prompted us uh, even more was seeing that the proportion of breast cancer in the Philippines is actually higher um, and highest uh, compared to the other ASEAN countries. So uh, that really uh, prompted us to say, oh, maybe we should really look at our uh, breast cancer and uh, 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 patients. Um, do we have some things that are not the same uh, as, as other, um, uh, other uh, uh, ASEAN countries? So, um, but the challenge was uh, we don't really have a very good uh, biobank system here and the method of collecting samples. Uh, so we, we have to figure out a way to connect, to connect the, uh, uh, the samples from uh, the, the patient to the, the scientist, the researcher, to be able to, to analyze this. Um, and uh, uh, both are challenging as well because uh, some of the medical doctors um, don't necessarily talk to the researchers here, and uh, uh, we don't also have a lot of experts uh, in the Philippines as well. Um, so that that becomes uh, quite of a challenge. And of course, there's a lot of hurdles. Uh, we're not very familiar with. Uh, uh, and then we have to have a data uh, database, and then uh, uh, coordinating with ethics, and of course, creating a standard operating procedure that might not necessarily be applicable here in the Philippines. Um, and there are some interesting things yeah, about uh, transportation um, uh, in Metro Manila, especially uh, the traffic is terrible. Um, so that was a challenge that, uh, that we also had to, to face. So the, um, uh, the, the establishment of the Cancer uh, Phenom Biobank uh, was uh, uh, spearheaded uh, by a, a project from uh, PICARI. Uh, this is funded uh, by the uh, Center for Higher Education in the Philippines, and they wanted to improve the, uh, the, the quality of research here in the Philippines. And so we collaborated with, uh, the, with uh, California, uh, UC, uh, uh, University of California, uh, San Francisco, uh, to help us uh, build a, a biobank. Um, we initiated the, the biobank from the Department of Surgery, as well as the Department of uh, OBGYN. Uh, both have the, the collection of, uh, of, um, of cancer from these departments, so we get uh, breast cancer from the surgery department and the um, uh, from uh, from the from the OBGYN we get the endometrial cancer as well as so ovarian cancer. Um, the, one of the challenges also that we, we face for the the biobank is we don't really have a centralized system. Um, each department don't really talk to each other, um, so we don't. Uh, the, the patient, um, the patients uh, are just sent to the different department, and sometimes uh, the patient themselves carry the, their their own information and then send it to the, the doctor that they talk to. So there's really no centralized system um, uh, in, in the hospital, even though it's located in the same uh, campus, it's in the same hospital. So that was quite a challenge. So we had to create a way to have them coordinate. And so, hence the biobank is so critical and very important to coordinate this information between the different departments. And of course, we have to have uh, uh, someone who's taking care of the informed consent, and this is not uh, part of the daily routine of uh, the, the medical doctors. So we have to have a staff for this uh, uh, separately. And, um, uh, and then coordinate with just the, the different departments, for example, the pathology and our uh, lobotomist uh, to be able to collect the samples that we need. Uh, and of course, the, during the ER, um, that we have to have uh, someone uh, collect the samples. Um, so we have, uh, in our project, we have our, um, uh, so in the buyback, we have a uh, designated clinical research associate, uh, a medical doctor who is, um, 
uh, coordinating with the general surgery department and the other one is coordinating with the OBGYN department. That way, we still have a connection, uh, even though they're different departments, that we can connect with them. Um, and if, and they, they, uh, all the, the data that they collect uh, is fed into the, um, the biomed personnel uh, who does the encoding of all that, the information. Um, because data is very important for biobank, um, we have to create a system, we have to find a system that is suiting, uh, that's suitable for the Philippines. We look at the different limbs that are available. Unfortunately, we cannot afford those limbs. They're actually quite expensive. And um, the initial is okay, but then the maintenance becomes very uh, difficult for us. So um, that was very difficult if in terms of sustainability. We cannot do that on long term, especially uh, we don't know, uh, you know the climate in terms of funding if it's always going to be there. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have a system that can, be, um, can still be maintained uh, within the hospital itself. Uh, so the hospital, uh, we have, um, uh, so what we did, we, we uh, hired a developer that created an open source uh, system so that we can um, uh, edit it later on if we need to. And um, uh, the nice thing about the hospital, there is also associated uh, health informatics uh, department that, um, uh, uh, that have several faculty that knows how to do uh, programming and also maintenance of um, some of this uh, database. So that way we were able to uh, generate uh, in-house uh, limbs um, uh, that, that is also uh, customizable. Um, so this is a bit different than the limbs that, are, um, that we see. Um, and it's more user friendly for uh, the, the medical, uh, the department, the medical doctors. Uh, uh, they need to change some, some information that, um, that needs to be included in the, uh, the database. Um, all our samples, what we, when we collect them, uh, we eventually we have to, of course, ident de identify them. And whenever we send it to the researcher, um, these are already all uh, de identified. Um, so now we are able to have a system where we can collect samples and uh, store the patient information so that we can do um, some correlation studies. Uh, so that was the initial um, uh, step that we need to do for uh, this simple buyback. Um, so the first uh, uh, project uh, that we um, did, so the initial, was to look at endocrine disruptors and correlating it with uh, breast cancer. Uh, this is the main fund, um, funding uh, that initiated that the biobank. Um, and why do we did this? Because uh, the environment uh, in, you know, in the Philippines, uh, we have uh, high biodiversity here, but unfortunately we also have diversity of trash. So we have so many of this uh, everywhere, and uh, we think that this might contribute to some of the, uh, um, the health disparities that we might have in the Philippines. So, um, so what we did is uh, we, we collected um, these samples and have them uh, analyzed. Um, but because we don't have a lot of the complete expertise, we collaborated with UCSF, uh, who was able to analyze this endocrine disruptor uh, for, uh, for this um, uh, you know, the, the chemical. Um, and um, so we did some uh, correlation studies with them. Uh, one of the, the challenges whenever we do uh, the, the collaboration with the biobank uh, one of the main questions was uh, in, in the collaboration, who uh, gets to publish the data, who gets um, the, um, uh, basically, basically who gets the, uh, um, uh, the uh, author, not who becomes a senior author. And that, that has been, um, uh, for us, it was, wasn't a big problem uh, because from the very start, we already said who uh, will be doing what. Um, uh, in this case, so uh, for example, for us, we said that we will be doing the uh, uh, the cancer um, correlation studies, and they would, uh, for them, they are interested in looking at the baseline that what we have and comparing it to the United States, not to the American. So, so we have, uh, in a way, it's a more of a win-win situation for both sides. Um, so this is just an example of what we've. Uh, uh, we're able to see. Uh, we see some uh, uh, cancer risk uh, in the uh, uh, patients with breast cancer. We see certain uh, endocrine disruptors that is higher um, in uh, uh, patients with breast cancer um, uh, compared to uh, uh, 
patients that do not have uh, breast cancer. Uh, another thing that was interesting that we found out was um, uh, there was actually differences in, in terms of the baseline. Um, so in the Philippines, we found out that there are uh, endocrine disruptors um, that are quite high uh, relative to the Americans. Uh, so two to, sometimes even two to 10 times higher uh, in uh, the Philippines uh, population. It doesn't matter if they have uh, breast cancer or they're normal, it's just in the general population it's high. So we think that this is very powerful in terms of our, um, uh, in terms of having a band uh, to, uh, of, of samples that we can then collaborate and then have um, samples analyzed. Um, one thing that uh, we uh, are encouraging um, uh, in terms of funding, in terms of the government, is that uh, in, in the U.S., they actually have a program wherein they collect uh, samples every certain year uh, and have them analyzed um, and so, that they can, oh, sorry, that, so that they can see if there are, uh, if, if there are uh, uh, certain uh, endocrine disruptors, if they create the policy, if uh, they, redo, uh, they, uh, uh, they decrease in time. No? For example, uh, for example, this particular phthalate, uh, phthalate um, uh, it was interesting that during this time, uh, they created a policy so that uh, uh, to ban certain, uh, uh, certain, uh, certain uh, products that have high levels of this particular uh, chemical, and uh, they saw a reduction uh, in the levels after certain years. So that was kind of a, uh, an interesting um, uh, uh, observation that they did, but this helped because they have a collection that they can analyze um, with, with time. So we hope that we could um, also implement this um, uh, later on. So one of the things that, uh, that we were also doing with the biobank was um, uh, now that we have the uh, some, some, some sort of levels of uh, endocrine disruptors and certain levels of um, uh, 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 cancer risk. We want to know if it's really just correlation or if there's causative uh, effect. Uh, one way to, uh, to do this is if we can get some cells from them and see if we treat them with um, uh, certain uh, endocrine disruptors, will they uh, respond to more uh, aggressively or they become more uh, cancer or they, they proliferate more. So in order for us uh, to do that, we, we also collected some cells uh, from, from, uh, from cancer patients and cultured them and uh, created uh, uh, some, uh, some lines. Uh, with, uh, this is in collaboration also with uh, UCSF. Uh, they taught us how to collect some cells and how to, um, how to grow them. Uh, but of course that requires also some uh, optimization and we did with it um, some optimization and uh, we found out which ones are the best method for us to grow these cells and uh, uh, also we have uh, we try to optimize the methods of, uh, of freezing these, uh, uh, these cells so so now we have a collection of cells that we can use for uh, for research uh, this is just examples of the cells that we were able to grow um, uh, the, the challenges that we have uh, faced you now, so uh, is of course optimization and uh, propagating them. Some we find that some cells do not really divide uh, very well, um, and some cells uh, requires uh, uh, so so some cells can divide, and yet after some time they would um, stop. Um, and so, uh, and another thing is the characterization of these uh, cells. And so, are they really the cancer that we're looking at, or are they just the uh, fibroblasts? No? So that's usually a challenge that we will we face um, uh, in terms of uh, characterization. Uh, we also tried with an attempt on doing 3D culture, um, as this becomes the most. Uh, uh, this is the um, uh, the trend right now, as this is closer to what is observed in uh, in vivo, as opposed to uh, in uh, uh, as opposed to uh, the cell lines. So, so that's why we tried an attempt on doing some clinical cultures as well. Okay, so, at the end, um, you know, so what is the uh, purpose also of these cells um, aside from uh, endocrine disruptors? We we um, also use this to see if we could um, 
uh, use this for uh, drug discovery as well. Uh, most of the cancer cell lines that are being used are uh, using cells from other uh, 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 derived, not necessarily from Filipino patients, and uh, uh, sometimes in, in, in the government and policy, we have to say that we are also testing it in Filipinos, that it is applicable in Filipinos. So, uh, uh, so hence, uh, uh, some of these cells are, are used to also test if they are applicable, um, if these drugs are applicable in Filipinos as well. Uh, of course, this is more of a, a proof of concept so that later on we can go to a clinical trial. Um, and um, uh, the hope is also with that we're not just going to focus on cancer, but we can go beyond cancer research, uh, that we, we can help in terms of, collect, of collecting. The idea of the PGH Biobank is that um, uh, we can later on help the, uh, the clinicians and researchers uh, within the, the hospital and outside uh, to how to establish uh, collection procedures. Um, that's, that's really our, our, uh, our main goal. Uh, for this biobank, and so that that way uh, it can also help uh, sustain its uh, its uh, services. Uh, so some some places, uh, some, some some labs do not have uh, uh, storage uh, facilities uh, when they want to collect something. They don't even have a procedure. They also don't know how to do the ethics. So that's where we hope that we can come in in terms of our um, in terms of the biobank. Uh, and um, you know it's a small step, but uh, perhaps we can help um, the rest of the country um, in terms of establishing uh, the, the biobank. Uh, that's actually pretty much it. Um, this is far in advance. Uh, if we can even do personalized medicine, that would be good. Uh, but um, we uh, uh, right now um, the idea of this is more in the uh, private hospitals that they can afford. Uh, to, uh, to do all this diagnosis. And so uh, in terms of the public hospital like PGH, we're not yet so sure where the funding will come from. So, uh, so this is more of a dream right now. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge um, the, uh, the, the contributors uh, for, for this, um, this biobank. Um, and of course, with the uh, UP Manila that is really spearheading the, uh, the biobank, um, and I'm, I'm just helping them out um, in terms of the collection, and uh, of course uh, our collaborators at UCSF. Um, this is just my uh, my team that are also working with other um, research. Thank you.